hate you shall be clothed with shame. Do you know why those that hate you shall be clothed with shame? Because the more they hate you, the more you prosper. Amen. The more they hate you, that you are handsome or beautiful, the more God will make you handsome and beautiful. Amen. The more they hate you, that you are pro prospering, progressing, the more you will progress. Amen. So at the end, what is going to happen with them? They will be clothed with shame. shame. You are going to pray, say, Oh Lord, my God. Oh, Lord, my God. Anyone that hates me, Anyone that hates let shame me. be their Lord. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Pray. It is, it is hatred that gives birth to wickedness. When people begin to hate you, listen, beware of people who hate you. Those who hate you can easily uh, 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 wicked you. They can easily plan wicked and evil act against you. Finish that job. Job chapter 8, verse 22. And the dwelling place of the wicked will come to nothing. And that, listen, no, you are not understanding. Can you read from here so that everybody can hear? They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame. And the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to now. Now, I want you to understand that there is a dwelling place of the wicked. Okay. There are places that the wicked sit. Praise the Lord. Amen. There are places that wicked, wickedness, wicked people, they sit to plan wickedness against you. You need to pray, pray for your life, pray for your family. Tell you the truth. Praise God. Before I get into this, brother, brother Mike, come. Come here. I want to, the Lord says to pray for you. Since we're worshiping, and I didn't want to do it, but now it's still coming. Why should I disobey God? Praise God. When you say it like this, brother Mike from Cameroon, but I will still bless you. Come. Since you're already here, Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. There was a time when ministering here, and God told me something. To speak to somebody I resisted, and I was telling my wife. And the thing God told me about the person happened. He said, you see, you have told that person. Praise God. No, I'm, I'm told that. So. Praise God. Hallelujah. Really is the man of God. This week, I dream about that person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. But during worship, the Lord was impressing in my spirit that I will pray for him. When we worship him, God, he said, You have to pray. Amen. Amen. But after that, I said, I think we'll put you in that prayer. And because of the prayer, the Lord said, Pray for him. Praise God. Brother Nita. Precious spirit of the Lord, the communion into your hands. Take charge over his life. I pray for your protection. I pray for your comfort upon his life. Any spirit of wickedness that is planned against you, I cancel it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you spoke and I obeyed. And I've laid my hands on him. Let your counsel stand. Let your will be done. By the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, every arrow that is against his life, loose in the name of Jesus. Any evil plan against him, Loose in Jesus' name. Amen. Every witch, wizard, phrase, family member that hate him, let shame clot them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Loose his soul. And let his life be free. Take the fire from the grass of his head down to the soles of his feet. Let him receive fire. 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 That will define his life. Fire. That will define his life. Fire. That will release his life. Fire. That will move him to his destiny. Now, in the name of Jesus, as the fire of God moves, let every wickedness go out. Let every arrow go out. Let every wickedness go out. Let every arrow go out. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. 
when you pray with the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You are blessed, brother. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, you are going to pray. Any dwelling place of wickedness, wherever they are, let them scatter by fire. Pray after them. Say, oh Lord, my God.
for the ideas of prayers recently. And then he called, uh, my sister now called me and was telling me that the man mistakenly told one of my sister that, that my elder sister is very strong, that if you want to kill her, you have to cross Salmon River. That she had been acting life, he took, talking to me life. He said, this man, he said, so at, at this very last time that I told somebody came to, to fight me, praise God, and I slapped the person back. The person still follow me sometimes in the dream. And I've been whipping in the dream and he has stopped, praise God. So this time he wanted to kill my, my sister. And he tried, and going to play sister. And then he's, 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 now he was confessing to my mother's sister. When they had some misunderstanding, he said, he doesn't even know what is wrong with your elder sister who will have taken her life away. But it's just that if I have to kill her, I have to cross several rivers. Hallelujah. Even if you cross that several river, you cannot kill her. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are going to pray for your family. Yeah. Any evil, plan against your family. Let God scatter that evil. Let God bring them to confession. Pray in the name of Jesus.
praise God. So quickly, 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 we, we are still on our topic, uh, understanding prophetic seed to, to fulfilling destiny is very important. And last week I talked on, you have to surrender how to activate your prophetic seed to fulfill destiny. Uh, number one, you have to surrender to the Lord. I said that last week. You have to surrender to the Lord because every destiny is connected to Christ and if any destiny must be fulfilled, then you have to be connected to Him. Praise God. Because He is the only one that can give you grace to fulfill destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. And as you are here today, you will fulfill destiny. Amen. So you surrender to the Lord. I don't know those who have not yet surrendered to the Lord. But the prerequisite for fulfilling destiny, what can provoke the seed that has been deposited inside you is to surrender to the Lord. Praise God. We saw how the Lord called uh, the, 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 his disciples and how they abandoned everything and how when they left him, they went for fishing to their own lifestyle and they could not catch anything until the Lord appeared. So that is just to, to trace the fact that there is no fulfilling of destiny out of God, out of Christ. There must be, you must, there must be a total handing over, total handing over, over your life. You must hand it over to him. And the second point I'm going to be talking on today is you must have a right and firm relationship and fellowship with God. Now listen, when the, when the disciples surrender, now the first step is to surrender. When you surrender, the second step is to maintain a right and a firm, number one, relationship, number two, fellowship. Praise God. Now, it's coming to him that you have relationship. But staying close to him is when you have fellowship. Praise the Lord. So it's when you stay with him then you cannot have fellowship with him. Now, in one way or the other, every, every one of us, we have relationship in one way or the other. But relationship is what is really lacking in our life. Because in, in relationship, there are, there are things that we need to do. In relationship, the, the, there has to be some kind of closeness. There has to be some kind of understanding one another, communicating with one another, visiting one another. So when we are talking about Christ, how do you communicate with him when you pray? How does Christ communicate to you with you when you read his word? Are you understanding? Hello? Am I speaking to somebody here? So that is the only way a relationship can be established. Now it's very easy to initiate a relationship but it's not easy to establish a fellowship. Because fellowship is when it's a communion, is when you have one on one uh, with somebody, one on one talk, one on one interaction, where somebody can confide in you, where somebody can trust you. That's fellowship when you commune with somebody, praise God, and it cannot stay with him coming close. There are a lot of people that are not close with Christ. They don't have that fellowship. What they have is relationship. Because when you give your life to, the, to Christ, you will automatically have a relationship with him. But what about fellowship? Now, I will have you to understand that when Christ called his disciples, they still with him. They were moving with him. They were walking with him. Praise God. They still, that is fellowship. There is no way you can maximize destiny without having an in-depth fellowship with Christ. I'm, I'm talking about in -depth, I'm not talking of shallow fellowship. Like just come to church on Sunday. To praise God. And give this in throughout the day. You cannot have an in-depth fellowship in that way. When you are too busy, you miss the, your aspect of fellowship. Though 
the relationship aspect will still be there. But you will miss an aspect of fellowship. When you meet, now let me tell you something. There are no neutral ground. There are no neutral ground. When you don't have fellowship with Christ, you have fellowship with the devil. Because, listen, there must be somebody you are close with. There must be somebody. You cannot be neutral. It's impossible. It's unacceptable. When you are not close with Christ, I'm going to show you that in a minute. When you're not close with Christ, you are close with the devil. I don't know if I'm talking here. Yes. I like to be some quiet. Then I know that it's entering. Praise God. Fellowship. Fellowship is what opens you up to your destiny. Fellowship is what reveals the mind of Christ to you and show you the things that you cannot see for your life. Because there are a lot of things in our life that we cannot see. There are a lot of things around us that we cannot see. Hey, if you are a child of God that cannot discern some things that is going on around your life, you are in for a very big trouble. Because the devil will use you, the devil will manipulate you, and you will not even know. That's why there are some people they got married to demons because they, they, they don't have relationship with Christ. They listen to the enemy. They fellowship with the devil. Nobody here will fellowship with the devil in Jesus' name. Yeah. Nobody here. I pray for you. You will not fellowship with the devil in Jesus' name. Yeah. I'm asking somebody. Yeah. So you must have a right relationship and a, a fellowship with God. Right relationship and fellowship. Now, listen, when you don't, I already made the statement, when you don't have fellowship with Christ, you will have fellowship with the devil. Now, let me show you something. Let's go to Matthew. Quickly, let's go to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. And then you will see something there. And you're going to understand what I'm saying better. Matthew 26. Are we there? Yes. Start reading from verse 36 for me. From verse 36. Mm -hmm. Then come and Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, mm -hmm. and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. Yes. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Praise God. Now stop. Listen to me. Jesus has called these men from their various occupations. Remember, most of them were fishermen. So Jesus called them. And it might have you to uh, interest you to know that when Jesus called them, they were working with Jesus, they were in relationship, and they were also in fellowship. So that's why the Bible says Jesus took them. They went together with Jesus into the mountain. And then when they arrived the mountain, then Jesus also select others. Because our relationship with Christ is in different levels. So there are some people that gravitate in a high level of fellowship and there are some people that gravitate in a low level of fellowship. But it's good, very good, when you have the fellowship. Praise the Lord. You know, because when you have the fellowship, you are still within his territory, the territory of Christ. When you have fellowship, you are still, you are still within his territory. Remember, it's dangerous when you are out of the territory of Christ. Praise God. It's detrimental. It's, it's very dangerous when you are out within the territory of Christ. Because it, Listen, in Psalm 91, when we all reside, he that dwelleth in the second place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of his... Now, so there is a second place, and that second place of the most high, the most high God is a place of fellowship. Praise God. It's a, I don't know if you are understanding. If you understand, it shout like, Amen. Amen. Okay, now you understand. Praise God. Now, so the second place of the Most High God is a place of fellowship. So he that dwelleth in the second place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. So when you are in that second place, which is a place of fellowship, then you have the covering of the Lord. Amen. You know what I'm You have the covering of the Lord. So they were in fellowship with the Lord. The Lord took them to the mountain. So they were within the territory of Christ. But then at that level, the Lord also took some people to the next level. God is taking you to the next level. Amen. I said God is taking you to 
the next level. Amen. Next level in your relationship. Amen. Next level in your fellowship. Amen. Next level in everything that you do. Amen. God is taking you to the next level in Jesus' name. Amen. So he came to the mountain and he took Peter, James, and John to another level. And because these are people who have a better understanding of him. These are people who, 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 who had fellowship with him. They stayed close. Did somebody stay close to Christ? So when you stay close to Christ, he, can, he will always move you to the next level of your life. So they have come to the mountain. So he moved them to the next level. Why the other disciples were here? So they went with him. Continue reading. And began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Yeah, so Christ was praying sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful. Yeah. Even and unto... you read from the Bible. Then continue. My soul. No, continue. There. I'm talking to the congregation. My soul is exceeding sorrowful. Yeah. Even unto death. Yeah. Tarry ye here and mm -hmm. watch with me. Mm -hmm. And he went a little further mm -hmm. and fell on his face mm -hmm. and prayed, saying, "O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me." Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Mm -hmm. And he cometh unto the disciples, mm -hmm. and findeth them asleep, mm -hmm. and said unto Peter, mm -hmm. What could ye not watch with me and her? Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now there's something here. So when Christ came back, he would invite them sleeping. But there was a good news. He could reach to them. Praise the Lord. Now, when he reached to them, he comforted them and he told them what they need to do. There are some of us, we don't even know what to do because we are far away from Christ. When you are, when you are, when you are closer with him in fellowship, he will always reveal to you what you can do. So he told them to watch and pray so that they will not fall into temptation. Why? They were accessible. Christ could reach to them. There are some of us Christ cannot reach to us. There are some of us Christ cannot, cannot reach because of our schedule, because of our busy activities, because of the things that clouded our mind, because of our ambition. Ambition. We are so consumed with our ambition, so much so that Christ cannot assess us. They cannot access us. Now, it doesn't, you can be weak. That Christ knows that the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. But just be available. Praise the Lord. When you are available, He can quicken you, He can strengthen you. So at this time, they were weak, they were feeling slippery, but because they have a fellowship with Christ, Christ could easily minister to them. So He told them, What I pray? That you don't fall into temptation. Continue reading. He went away again the second time. So he went to pray again the second time. And prayed, saying, Oh yes. my father, uh -huh. if this cup may not pass away from me, mm -hmm. except I drink it, mm -hmm. thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And he came and found them asleep again, mm -hmm. and their eyes were heavy. Mm -hmm. And he left they have, them. They have struggled, their eyes were heavy. They, they, they are fighting. Listen, I don't know. But I want to encourage you to keep fighting in this Christian race. Praise God. Your eyes may be heavy. You may fall. But when you fall, don't remain there. When you fall, you rise. Amen. Praise God. Their eyes were heavy. And Christ came and saw their effort. He saw that they, they put in some little effort. And he told them, oh, sleep now. Preacher. what Christ told them. And he left them and went away again. And, he went away and prayed again. the third time, mm -hmm. saying the same words. Mm -hmm. Then cometh he to his disciples. Then he came back to his disciples. And said unto them. And said unto them. Sleep on now. Sleep on now. And take your rest. And take your rest. Because yes, when you have fellowship with Christ, you sleep and rest. Yes. Are you not understanding me? Hello? Yes. They were with him. So he told them to do what? To sleep and rest. He said, if you don't cease from your own level, you cannot enter my rest. So when you don't see from your level, from that person activities, you cannot enter into God rest. But when you are within God territory, then He keeps you rest all around your life. Yes. He keeps you sleep. There are some people that cannot sleep. 
like you. Then you come. So that we will pray for you to sleep. Come, come, come. It's not a joke. Come. It's good if the word of God and somebody compare. So we have to pray. Praise God. I release the rest of God into your heart. Amen. His peace and his sleep. Yes. He said, the Lord giveth sleep to his beloved. Lord, by the virtue of this your world that is going forth, bless her with the grace to sleep and rest. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I bind every spirit of insomnia. And I release sleep. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. So some people can now we, 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 don't, they don't sleep. They don't rest. They, are, they, they keep themselves busy. They walk their muscle. I, I, I come to talk to somebody here. Stop walking your muscle. Amen. Your muscle is useless. Yes. Are you understanding me? Yes. Your muscle is useless. The Bible says that a horse is prepared for a battle. But victory is of the Lord. Yes. If you like, you arm your horse very well. Hold fear, hold everything, and your horse is very powerful. Only God can do it. Pharaoh carried a host of horses and chariots after the Israelite and the end of the Red Sea. Yes. You can you can prepare your horse very well, and the Red Sea will still swallow you. Yes. <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody here? Yes. Come was walking your muscle, learn how to rest and hand the battle to the Lord. Yeah. On Friday, I showed the scripture to, to, the, to the people we pray together. Psalms 110. Somebody read that scripture. Let me make a note on it again. Psalm 110, quickly. We're coming back here. We didn't finish here. What I want to establish in Matthew, we didn't even go there. Psalm 110, quickly, sister. If anybody is there, just read. We don't have time. I want to get time today. Now listen, he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit here at my right, at my right until I put your enemy on Oh, God, I love that scripture. Are you understanding me? He said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make the enemy that push to go. Oh, God, no, the congregation is not understanding me. Brother, you come, come, come. Brother, just please come. Come. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. This, this, this is Rajos. Praise God. Amen. This is Rameo. He is God. Amen. Amen. Now, Rameo has told Johnson, sit at my right hand. And you sit down. <laughs> Cover your eye and you are sleeping. Praise God. Amen. I'm coming to attack him now. You fight. Hallelujah. That one you. This is sit at my right hand. Sleep, rest until I make your enemy your first to. So by the time Brother Joseph sleep and wake up, I'm already down because the Lord has fought for him. Yes. Right now. And he will just march on me mm. and go out. Mm. I see you marching on your enemy. Yeah. I see you in Jesus' name. Keep your muscle. God doesn't keep your muscle. Sit down at my right hand until I make you an enemy that too. Right. He said, it is vain for you to get up early and sleep late. Yes. He said, a city, he said, watch man that watching without the Lord watches in vain. You are doing that all in vain. Praise God. Hallelujah. In your life, you have all kind of protection. Like what some of us used to have you to be jam with pocket, no, all the no, ring we no, wear. No, no, cannot no, no. protect you. No, no, are you no, understanding no. me? Yeah. Praise God. Stop wasting your time. And the thing you tell your ways, the moment you forget in the toilet, it's forgotten. So if, 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 even if the devil could not attack you because of that Jigija, when you forget it in the toilet, they will attack you that time. But can you forget God? No. Oh my God, this congregation is not with me now. No. Can you forget God? No. Can you go and what is behind? No. He said, wherever you go, I will go with you. Okay. Are you understanding me? It's not, it's not like, it's not like all these things we carry. You find some people, they are struggling and they are calling and uh, there are lots of people in Europe and they are sending money to their parents to go to Baba Olao house. Don't yeah. waste time. Praise God. Yeah. It's useless. Sit down at my right hand and I make the enemy die first too. Yeah. It's, 
is the location where you are. Is is we are talking about a spiritual territory. Because your safety is dependent on your spiritual territory, your spiritual location. Where are you spiritually? Where are you spiritually? Where are you spiritually? That is the question the Lord is asking somebody here. Where are you spiritually? Because everything about your life is dependent on your spiritual location and territory. They went on the mountain with the Lord. And the Lord told them, sleep and rest. Your spiritual territory. Where are you spiritually? Where are your spiritual territory? Ask somebody beside you. Where are your spiritual territory? Where are your spiritual territory? Praise God. Ask somebody beside you. Where is your spiritual location? And then let us let us see because I want to contrast something in the life of the apostles, the disciple with Christ. Now, the, the, the disciple were in the mountain. That was their spiritual location, their spiritual territory. But now, let's read down we're going to also discover something. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag here. I want you to discover it from that scripture. Continue reading. Sleep on now and yes. take your rest. Yes. Behold, the hour is at hand. Yes. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sin. Yes. Continue. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Rise. Let us be going. Mm. Behold, he is at hand. Mm. That do betray me. Mm -hmm. And while he yet spake, Lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staffs. Now stop. There were twelve disciples, but it was only eleven in a spiritual location, in, on the mountain with the Lord. So as they were coming, then Judas now was coming from another group. Oh my God! <laughs> in this congregation, listen. I, I, I like when I'm given a revelation, you are catching in the spirit. So he was with another group. Coming. Where are you spiritually? Mm. Because where you are will determine the forces that is working inside of you. Yes. It will determine the spirit that drives you. It will determine the spirit that influences you. Because we are all influenced by a spirit. Yes. And that influence is dependent on your spiritual location or territory. Yes. So the 11 disciples were coming from the mountain. They were in, this, in their own spiritual location, in their own spiritual position, in their own spiritual territory, and Judah was in his. He was in his, his own company. Because your territory will determine, will determine the company you also attract. Your spiritual location, your spiritual position will determine the people you keep, the people you attract, the people that comes around you. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So Judah was not in that spiritual territory. He was missing. So in on the mountain, it was only 11. But he called how many? He called 12. But Judah had a relationship because he was called. But he lacked fellowship because his spiritual territory defined his position. Where he was. He lacked fellowship. He was not with the Lord on the mountain. Listen to me. When you are not fellowshipping with the Lord, you are fellowshipping with the devil. Anytime you get to and say you cannot pray, you are praying with the devil. Anytime you say you are not going to, you are not going to the church, you are fellowshipping with the devil. Whether you believe it or you don't believe it, I have come to tell you the truth because you will know the truth after two percent to pray. Praise the Lord. So people, they miss from fellowship. They miss to pray. They miss to meditate their Bible. When you don't meditate your Bible, you fellowship with the devil. And this man came with the devil, with the company of the devil. Who are the people that are accompanying you? Who are your group? The people you keep, who are they? This man was coming with a chief priest. His company was different, but yet he was a child of God. He was relating with other forces, and yet he was a child of God. Is, that, is it not the same in the church? We call ourselves children of God, we call ourselves Christian. But who do we relate with? Who are the company that we keep? 
who follow us, who influence us. As you are sitting here, the Holy Spirit is asking you, what is influencing you? What is driving your life? Which spirit is driving your life? Which spirit? Which spirit is driving your life? Which spirit? Judah was driven by a wicked spirit. Forces that betray Christ. Christ was coming from the mountain and Judas was coming from the camp of the enemy. Where are you? Where do you belong? On the Lord's side or on the enemy's side? Where do you belong? Where? Spiritual position. Spiritual territory. So you find a lot of people in the church and they are Judas, they are betrayer, betrayer. Every day they are selling Jesus. Every day they are betrayed, they are betraying Jesus. Judas betrayed Jesus. Listen, it's very dangerous when you are not in fellowship. I'm talking about faith fellowship. How to maximize destiny. How to activate the prophetic seed inside you to fulfill your destiny. <laughs> Hello? Uh -huh. your, your spiritual location is, is important. Your spiritual position is necessary. You must define your position. This man came. May you never be in the opposite side in Jesus' name. Amen. Because we all know we don't have details to go into that. How Judah ended. He ended up because of his spiritual calm. His group. Your group. Sometimes we'll tell you, if you're a believer, there are some things you need to say, pray for. Say, Pastor, they are my friend. 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 Praise God. Some people are coming from nightclub. You're a betrayer. Praise God. You betray Christ. Because the moment you do something contrary to the, the covenant you have with Christ, you are not a betrayer. Praise the Lord. You are not a betrayer. Am I still somebody here? Yes. Judah was not in the camp. He was not on the back. He was not on the mountain. But he was with the enemy. When you are not with Christ, you are with the devil. And it's so sad because the devil always used you and taught you. He said the thief coming not but to steal, to kill. And to destroy. He doesn't have any good to offer. You see the way they dumped Judas? They dumped him. Even when he realized himself, he went to give them the money. They laughed him. He said, look at you. He said, go and see to me, my friend. Because the devil can never help you when you need help. Now, even when the devil is using you, you know how you are going to end. So Judas threw the money on the ground, went and hung himself. A curse for death. You will not die that kind of death in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then they went back and took the money and go and buy a burial place. Burial place. <laughs> Praise God. The devil is not, he doesn't care about you. Please, the Lord is calling us into a fellowship. He's calling us into a fellowship. I want to encourage everyone here when you get up. I mean, 30 minutes with God is very important. When you have 10 minutes with God, the devil cannot come, come close to you. They cannot speak. The reason why we hear some, 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 some evil word in our mind, you find people, they do things they are not supposed to do. And then they say, they cry. They say, oh, I don't really want to do the, this kind of a thing. But they find themselves doing it. Why? Because it's the force that is driven their life. Praise the Lord. It's the force that is driven their life. But when you speak, 
30 minutes on the word of God. You can have a scripture. And that scripture can work in your mind throughout the day. The devil don't have any room. Praise the Lord. The devil don't have any room. That's why Peter was so strong. John was so strong. James they were so strong. All that disciples, they were so strong. They stayed with the Lord. Why? Because of fellowship. Judas ended up back then. Because of his spiritual territory, his spiritual location and position. As we are here today, as you are leaving this place, I want to encourage you to define your spiritual territory and your spiritual position in Jesus' name. Amen. And the church arise. I don't want to keep you for long. I don't want you to understand that to fulfill destiny, you must define your spiritual location, your spiritual territory. Your spiritual location. Listen, it is in my interest for you to fulfill your destiny. That is what I am called for. Praise God. That's why I'm talking about destiny all the time. Because you cannot be under this covert, under this grace, and you miss your destiny. Praise the Lord. I have come to tell someone here that you will fulfill your destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. Nothing will stop you in Jesus' name. Amen. But it's of utmost importance for us to define our location, our, our territory. Where do you belong? Where are you standing? On which ground are you standing? Are you with Christ? Are you with the enemy? I want to give somebody an opportunity. Maybe your relationship with the Lord has not been very strong. You, you want to pray, but you cannot pray. It's a spirit. They are attacking you to keep you in their territory, in their car. You want to read your Bible, but you cannot. You don't have a, a, an ongoing flowing relationship, a fellowship with Christ. Come forward, let me pray for you. I will break that yoke and release you to be able to flow in prayers and in meditation. I know we all have relationship. I'm talking about fellowship. This fellowship is very important. It, it, it's a fellowship that will determine your territory. It's a fellowship that will determine where you are. If you, are, if you find difficult, difficulty in reading your Bible, in praying, please come forward. There is something wrong. My life. Brother, what here? I'm not saying that you, you are living in sin, but I'm saying that you have a relationship with the Lord, and you really want to read your Bible, you cannot read. You really want to pray, but you cannot pray. Something is wrong somewhere. My if you hear the voice of God, don't harden your heart. Because after this meeting today, your fellowship with Christ was changed. Jesus. The Lord was, He was have grace to read your Bible.
Please. You are here.